Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Colton Underwood, the artist formerly known as Lovebird on The Masked Singer. Colton, you sneaky lovebird. Uh, you've been in the spotlight on reality TV for years now, for better or worse. Um, what's it been like to now do this with a mask to sort of shield you as you step out and try something new, at least in front of millions of people? I mean, I feel like it's so fitting, weirdly enough, that, you know, I, I get to return back to television this time wearing a, a physical mask and um, have that sort of safety blanket of performing without people knowing exactly who I am until, you know, they, until I get eliminated. But such a freeing and, and lovely experience. Has music always been an interest of yours or like, do you just hum around the house or... You, Look, you... I, I mean, my, my singing capabilities are in the car and in, in the shower. Um, I will say, though, music has always been a form of therapy to me. Um, as someone who is an athlete, I love, you know, it's it's just a way to clear my head, to get my head right, to, to you know, connect to the lyrics, to the melodies, to the songs. Um, so for me to have that opportunity to get on stage and select a song and lyrics that speak to me and my existence and, and my experience was it was a really cool thing. You sang Home by Philip Phillips and All That You Are by Goo Goo Dolls during your run on the show. Is that sort of your wheelhouse? Are you sort of a pop rock kind of guy or or was that new to you? Did you choose those songs or were they sort of brought over to you? You know, it was just a, it was a conversation that we had. I think pop rock was something that complimented my voice. I think, you know, the other genre that uh, that I was playing with was country, but I, I don't quite have that that twang. Um, I grew up in Illinois and the the accent's a little different than than your typical you know southern accent and draw so um pop rock was more so what i leaned into versus country your first week was that crazy prank with kevin hart unmasking himself as book so were you prepared to go back out and like listen to a vote or did you kind of know like okay something weird is is going on uh, like or i had no clue what was like going everyone on. else I was surprised. All, all I knew is there was no elimination for us. So we, we were good to go. Um, and I think I was, I was a little shocked. I you know, I would have been the same. I would have been happy if I would have got eliminated that night. It was just so, so fun to do. Um, well, this last week, there's five of you. Uh, Cause yeah. this wild card comes in Koala. He's a good singer too. Everyone in your group was good. Were you disappointed when you heard your name announced as the first one being eliminated? I mean, of course, a little bit. I think the natural competitor in me was a little let down. But, you know, I, I have to admit, I think it was my time to go. Um, there was a lot of songs and a lot of lyrics I was going to have to learn for the next, you know, the next week. And I don't know if I had, you know, the full toolkit to be able to prepare like I needed to. So um, it was a, it was a good week for me to say goodbye. And then they kick off to Marcus Ware. I don't know if it was Transformers yeah. night or get rid of the football players night. I mean, what was up with that? Look, I mean, it was sort of fitting and, and iconic in a way that I, you know, I've, I always looked up to his play style. We played similar positions in uh, what I played in college and um, an unbelievable talent. Also someone who I, I got to listen to sing the national anthem at, at the NFL game. So um, just it's sort of fitting and sort of fun all, all at once to happen. Did you get to see him after then? Since you both unmasked, do you get to meet up or, or are you just sort of rushed off? No, everybody stays stays apart. I think that's sort of what's cool about the show is you really have no clue who's on it and who's doing what and 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 you never get to really interact with anybody. What did you think about the judges? Um, they guessed Josh Demel, Mike yeah. the Situation. That's a fun one. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and then Jenny guessed you. She's the only yes. panelist that like goes down that bachelor wormhole of clues that they have for you. Uh, what were your thoughts on on those names? I I think I knew if anybody was going to guess me, it was going to be Jenny. You know, she is a reality TV guru. She read my book. I, I was very familiar with her and and had had done interviews and and spoke to her before. So, um, someone who is is incredible. Uh, the other guesses were great. And I think that's what's beautiful about a show like this is you never know who's going to be underneath that mask. Um, the talent that they get year in and year out. And also just um, it's just a fun experience that I think a lot of people say yes to because it's um, a family show and it's a really good environment uh, to work in. Well, we mentioned that you had a public life. Of course, you were in the NFL and then you became really famous on The Bachelor and you had this whole coming out story that... Um, was sort of like brutal to have to go through that in the public eye. And you've spoken a lot about 
mental health. Um, and that's really your focus now in life is making things better for the next generation. Talk ma maybe just a little bit about your own experience and then tell us about the Colton Underwood Legacy Foundation, if you could. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, I really sort of had to navigate uh, my growing up in front of the public eye. I was, you know, in my mid 20s when I first signed up on The Bachelor and then filmed three of those shows in one year and, you know, it changed my life. Um, and I really sort of had to figure out who I was. And I had a lot of shame around my sexuality and and really getting to a place where I could, you know, confidently say I'm I'm a gay man um, and I didn't handle things the best way that I possibly could. I should have never been in this position, but here I am. And how do I make best with this opportunity now? How do I, you know, communicate to our community that like you're not alone out there so other people don't end up in a position that I'm in? And um, I think when I look back, a lot of my struggles happened you know, around the church and sports and my desire to be a dad. So giving back to the mental health community after my mental health breakdown was something that I knew I always wanted to do. Um, and starting with the athletic community is just uh, so fitting. And you're taking action. You've met with legislators, you've talked with lawmakers in DC, and you're really working with Republicans and Democrats. Um, yeah. Bipartisan. Yeah. Um, so what sort of conversations are you having? Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm really proud. We have the Teams Act that is both introduced in the House and the Senate. It start, stands for targeting emotional and mental stability. Cory Booker on the Democratic side and Senator John Boozman on the Republican side are leading it. Um, it is bipartisan, which is rare these days and something that I was sort of a non-starter for me if it wasn't just because we need all the help that we can get. Um, and I'm just really proud of, of the work and the meetings that I've had. I think a lot of people can look at the you know, the state of college athletics and say, these kids need our help. Um, the added pressures from these TV contracts through NIL, through transferring, through sports betting has changed the landscape of athletics forever. Um, and we need to really give these kids the tools to be successful and take care of their mental health. Can you please tell me about the Pickle for Purpose Invitational? Because I love watching pickleball. I'm like one of those people that's yeah. you know, Agassi and John McEnroe or Steffi Graf. I'm like, yes. Uh, yeah. So this is becoming popular. Talk about this tournament that you set up. Name some names. Who actually won? And then how do I get to see this again? I hope you're having another one because I need to I need to come and watch this. Yeah, well, the I'll, the the kids who won, we, we gave we hosted it at Pepperdine University and we were like, Put two of your athletes in it. And of course, the two athletes beat every, every celebrity in it. Um, <laughs> it was just so fun from, you know, June Diane Raphael coming on playing to Johnny Sibley to Michelle Wee. We had just such a great group of, of, of characters and celebrities that, um, you know, some took pickleball very serious and some just never played before. Um, so it was a great range. And we had professionals there as well. And I'll tell you, the professional pickleball players are in a league of their own. The hand speed and, and just the way that they they play the sport is really impressive. It's so fun. Um, and you have a podcast called Daddyhood. You want kids, right? That's a lot of yeah. work. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Pack the Parenthood with my husband right now, and we're very excited about it. How many are we talking? Uh, the game plan right now is two. So oh. and we'll reevaluate after two um, and go from there. All right. Well, listen, Colton, congratulations on um, everything that you have going on. It was super fun to watch you on Mass Singer, um, and sorry to see you go, but keep up all the important work, and thanks for coming to chat with us at Gold Derby today. Yeah, thank you, Dutton. I appreciate it.